At this moment in the world, we have a very big problem of natural resources, fossil fuels, and also carbon dioxide together. We have unclosed carbon cycle. So we are taking a lot of energies from fossil fuel, for example, coal, oil, gas, natural gas, and we are just burning them and using it for transport or taking electric energy out of it. And at the, end, at the end of the day, what we have is carbon dioxide, which is accumulated in the atmosphere. And at this moment, conversion of this atmospheric carbon dioxide into fossil fuel is not actually done. So in order to have elemental carbon management, we need to close this carbon cycle from carbon dioxide into possibly fuel. And among all the chemicals which can be used as fuel, we thought methanol can be one of the most promising ones. Because methanol is a fundamental chemical in chemical industry, for example, for the production of formaldehyde, acetic acid, etc. But also, methanol can be used as fuel. And this is very important. We can drive car with methanol or blend with gasoline, or we can actually use it as it is in fuel cell. And this is very important. So this feature also we can, uh, in addition, we, we can use methanol as C1 feedstock. So we can produce also olefins, very fundamental chemical. So that's the reason why we decided to work on CO2 conversion, especially hydrogenation, to methanol. We decided to take a unique approach of high pressure reaction. You may think that high pressure may be not advantageous. It may be dangerous and also costly, but it is not always like that. What we can have is like a CO2 and hydrogen. When we mix them together, when it is a compressive fluid. So when we increase pressure, the reactor size can become smaller, smaller, smaller. The gas gets compressed. So we can actually do the same amount of conversion within a much smaller reactor volume. And this is a big advantage for cost and also safety. And another important thing is that when we have high pressure and high temperature, we have supercritical fluids. And the gases are diffusing very fast so that we can expect enhancement of reaction rate. And the most importantly, the advantage is thermodynamics. So when we increase the pressure for this reaction, we can shift the equilibrium to the direction of products. Therefore, we can produce methanol at high efficiency. So in this setup, what we have is high pressure hydrogen, which is coming from here. And we, we have a hydrogen compressor, and we boost the pressure, as you see here, over 400 bar. And this is going to the some tubings for the buffer volume. And then we reduce the pressure using pressure reducers. And then the pressure is reduced, as you see there, a little bit lower than 400 bar. And then going to this mass flow controller, controlling the flow rate of hydrogen and going into the reactor. And at the same time, we have a CO2, carbon dioxide syringe pump. So we take liquid CO2 in the syringe and then we can pump at the very low flow rate, liquid CO2, and then they are mixed, uh, mixed together with uh, high pressure hydrogen. So this uh, hydrogen and the CO2 are passed at the defined flow rate from here. And then it is going to the reactor, which is very small, we can call it micro reactor, and then going out, and then going to this so-called back pressure regulator. This is the very important uh, equipment uh, because it controls the pressure of the reactor. And after this back pressure regulator, pressure is released and then going to gas chromatograph for chemical analysis. Using this high pressure approach, we could actually reach, for the first time, the equilibrium conversion of this reaction. So this means that the catalyt catalytic process is reached to the thermodynamic limit. So we cannot go 
exceed over. Even if we improve the catalyst, we cannot exceed this limit. And we reach this point, and this is very important because using good catalyst, this is important, but also this condition, we could reach the conversion limited by the thermodynamics. And by that, what I mean is we could achieve 95% conversion above that of CO2 and selectivity over 98% to methanol. And also in this reaction, we produce water as byproduct, and we just pass this methanol and the water rich stream to the another reactor, and we could also show that we could convert methanol to dimethyl ether or methanol to olefins or alkanes. This is something we could show using this high pressure approach. And uh, so far, the productivity is by far the best in the world. So at this moment, we have the very nice performance, but we can still improve. So for example, lowering the temperature. But in order to lower the temperature, we need to have better catalysts. How can we have better catalysts? We would like to design new type of catalyst based on rational understanding. To do so, we would like to see the catalyst under reaction condition, so in situ, operando spectroscopy to see what's going on, and we would like to design new generation of catalyst so that we can work with possibly lower pressure and then lower temperature to be more sustainable. And furthermore, we would like to have this technology implemented in industry. So we would like to work on the scale up of this process.